was like a robot. I just seemed to just go down that corridor in a state of shock. And uh, when I got down, I had to prepare before I went in to see them. I had to sterilize and wash my hands and put on protective clothing. And uh, I just went straight in. I didn't just prepare myself to look. I just went over and just before I knew what was happening, I was looking straight at my two daughters. And my first words were to the doctor, aren't they beautiful? And he, he sort of looked at me in surprise and he said, yes, I suppose they are. I saw photographs first. Kiss the shop would be too much. After seeing the photographs, I wanted to see them in reality. You know, photographs can only tell you so much. So when I saw them, they're just two little babies. I was amazed at how normal looking they were, you know, and um, they're frightened, I suppose, at the same time, frightened that I would hurt them by holding them this way or that way. Like all mothers, she just, you know, she was just delighted with them. She just, they were her children, just like her other children. And she had just the same bonding at that moment that any mother would have to her newborn baby. I was afraid I'd bond too much. That, that was a worry, um, because we thought they'd die. And you were afraid to let yourself go too far to getting to know them. Prior to um, them being born, that thought did come to us that uh, we probably will not be able to accept them like we would accept other babies. But when we saw them and held them, that just evaporated away. It just wasn't a, it wasn't a consideration. Our, our heart was probably ruling our head at that stage, you know, we just didn't, we didn't logically think anymore. We were just, our emotions were just taken over by the, the joy of, of seeing the little children alive and, you know, wanting to be held like all newborn babies. May 1991, and the twins, Katie on the right and Eilish on the left, are two and a half years old. They're playing with their three older sisters. Mary and Liam only found out they were expecting Siamese twins the day before they were born by caesarean section. Their doctors decided not to separate them. Let's go, Katie. Good girl. I think the natural response when you see twins like this is to see if they can be like the rest of us, whether that's good or bad, uh, and therefore lead separate existences. But equally, one would have to consider whether separating them just for the sake of conforming to our ideas of normality would in fact help them or kill them. Because this is a surgical procedure, especially in the first few months of life, that carries a reasonably high mortality. As the infants get older, the mortality rate drops and can get down as low as 10%. The Holtons live in a small village outside Dublin where the twins are well known. We won't ever have a completely normal life because we will always be open to people gazing at us when we go out in public. But um, I think acceptance is probably what we want more than anything else, and or even the, the security in our own, in ourselves that we're able to come and go as we please. Wash your hands again. I'm amazed at how normal it is. I, I, I know we strive to keep it normal, but I mean I'm amazed that we're actually more or less able to manage that. We do what most families do, trips to the zoo or trips to the supermarket and everybody goes.
You know what I'm saying, no? Hey, no. No. Are you tired? Are you tired, Catherine? Are you tired? Are you very tired? Siamese twins are extremely rare. They occur once in a hundred thousand births when, purely by chance, an egg in the womb fails to divide successfully. Although Katie and Eilish are Siamese twins, their parents regard them as normal children in a unique situation. We might now take a take this off. It's a bit, a bit warm in here. I don't see how I would have coped in this situation at all. And yet Mrs. Horton meets you as though, but everybody else is twins like this, so what's the problem? Are you thirsty? Get a drink? Okay. Do you want apple juice? Yes, mommy. You want seven up? Ravina. I think it takes tremendous strength and uh, I suppose love to uh, achieve this kind of equanimity in dealing with a problem like they appear to have. Being brought up in that household, these twins are going to have great difficulty believing that there is really anything very much wrong with them. They're so much part of the family, so much part of everyday life. They are accepted in their community. Um, so they are not made to feel very different. Liam is a sales rep for a pharmaceutical company. Neither he nor Mary feels bitter. The situation was much greater than us. Like crying over it or being angry over it or being bitter over it wasn't going to change the way the twins were. So then you have to look into another part of yourself and say, well, right, uh, if I have to accept, you know, this cross, Christians would probably call it a cross, you know, and the twins being the way they are is probably a cross. Like, how do you carry that cross lightly or with meaning? You're coming a very you round can come up way. Come over here. Like. You don't have to come around us. Physically, the twins are healthy, although doctors can't say for certain whether they'll live to a normal age. They attend weekly physiotherapy oh. sessions to improve their mobility. Over your are you going over here to the balloon? Yeah. Right. Quickly. It will take a while before they can walk, I, I imagine. They're very top-heavy. And their two legs are, are holding the, the weight of two bodies, which is a difficulty in itself and um, also it's said that a baby develops from the head down and I would imagine because they're able to sit up and just move on the floor that their legs are not developed yet anyway and the reason for physiotherapy is that we encourage them. Lift up that head, Irish up you come, good girls and one, well done and down you go slowly now as slowly as ever you like and right down, I think you're having a rest halfway. I would hope myself that they will walk. Initially, I can see they'll start off with some appliance or other, they just won't walk as a normal child would walk. Don't let me pull you backwards. They'll need something to support their upper body weight. Backwards. Come on, good girls, well done. Well done. Is ma'am helping with the toes down there? No. Eilish no. <laughs> is looking and Kate is hidden. Now who's there? Two girls, two girls there. Go on, throw them up again. Catherine likes a bit of fun. She likes to be in the middle of things. Eilish is a little bit more reserved and likes to size people up and wouldn't be as uh, free-making with people as Catherine. Oh, that's a nice dress. I think those balloons could go home, could they? They, they get on quite well, OK, most of the time. Occasionally, there's a, a bit of a row, all right. Uh, if one has a particular toy and the other wants it, they can have a little scratching session or I'll bite you, baby. <laughs> The big splash on my face there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. Is that nice, is it? I guess you will bite it. I'm going to go. I don't know if you bite it. I'm going to go. That's clear, dear. Can you listen? 
This way you go. Are you messing? I'm not messing. No, you're good girls, aren't you? Oh, you go like this. Good luck, Lizzie. You're blowing like this. Oh, the children are totally accepted. Adults, not so. Whereas they're quite chatty at home normally, or within the close family circle, they are. But if strangers come in, they're inclined to shut up and say nothing. And Eilish will observe and observe and observe and say nothing. But um, after a while, you find that they will talk. So, so are they quite shy? They, they would be shy, but they're terribly nosy. <laughs> they like to know what's going on. They, Eilish particularly. She has to really know what's going on. I suppose it's her way of uh, making sure that everything is OK and feeling safe. Yes. Oh. Have we anyone in here to see us, huh? Hello, hello, hello. Where's Katie and Eilish? Oh, look! How are you? Give me a big kiss. Give me a big kiss. Oh, come on. Mm. How are you? Are you as well? How did you a good day? How did you... Huh? How did you a good day? And what about Mammy? Had Mammy a good day? Mm? <laughs> She's alive, <laughs> just about. Huh? Great. Oh, look who's coming now. Hello. Give me a big kiss. Had a good day, had you? It's all right. Do you like to see that at home, do you? Yeah? It's good. Huh? Yeah. Lovely. All right. How are you? Huh? Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's great. From the beginning, the question of separation has overshadowed the twins' lives. But it was certainly obvious from a very early stage that these twins were going to be severely physically handicapped, that it was going to be di difficult, if not virtually impossible, to separate them, and that this was going to present the parents with this terrible dilemma for many years to come. So my initial reaction was one of disappointment, horror, if you like, at the degree that the babies were going to be handicapped. Since the twins were basically healthy, the paediatricians in Dublin were able to delay surgery. They were heavily influenced by the fate of another set of Siamese twins born at the same hospital by an extraordinary coincidence just six weeks earlier. An attempt was made to separate them. They weren't as extensively joined as the, as the Holton twins. It was thought reasonable to attempt to separate these twins, but regretfully, both twins died during the operation to separate them, or shortly afterwards. We'll take off these old dirty socks, will we? Yeah. But they're wet. And they're wet. Oh, and for my shoe. Oh, yeah. Terrible, isn't it? Now, will we sit up? As they grew older, Katie and Eilish underwent tests to find out as much about their anatomy as possible. Although they have separate hearts and lungs, they share other internal organs. They're more severely joined than any Siamese twins who've been successfully separated in the past. I'm very tired. Staying together, they really don't exhibit much sign of illness. They are healthy children.
they are leading a good life. Separated, they are going to be uh, devoid of a number of the organs and appendages which the rest of us have to allow us to lead a normal life. So we would in no way be promising them a normal life if they were separated. Like, I mean, there are an awful lot of questions to be asked. It's not something that you say, yeah, well, we'll do that anyway. You have to know, would the life, their life be better if we were to go ahead, or would they live? We have to know the risks, which I'm sure are high. There's a lot of um, doubt about the liver, the possibility of separating the liver. Uh, one or other might have to have a liver transplant, and that would entail major risks. But apart from that, um, uh, the pelvis is shared by both, so they would only have a half a pelvis each if they were separated. So really, would we improve the quality of their life to any major degree by separating them, just for the sake of separating them? Oh. I see what's going on. <laughs> I see what's going on too. The fact that Katie and Eilish appear to be happy together has made their doctors wonder whether they should be separated, even if it is possible. The rest of us looking at people like this think that they are different and being different is wrong, and therefore that creates one pressure. Um, the other part of it is, it is possible, I think, for two people to have a very close relationship, and perhaps not to see it as a disadvantage to be together to this degree all the time. That's theoretical. So though we value individuality, they might not value it. They might prefer togetherness. If their relationship is such, they could very well be happy with their togetherness. Now, Since only Katie and Eilish can answer this question, should they be the ones to decide whether or not they're separated? If they are left together long enough, yes, I could see that happening. But I think we would really be talking about, I suppose, almost the end of the first decade before you would be, they would be able to appreciate all that is involved and be able to give some kind of judgment. They will have had a life together. They will, at that stage, have seen how different other people are. They will be aware of other people's attitudes much more than they are now. They may feel that the end result is worth this. I think, at this stage, the end result is a doubtful quantity for them. And. Uh, I suppose, just being a procrastinator, I would certainly not want to make that decision for them. Let me see if there's a fish in the river. Yeah, we'll look in and see if there's a fish. Nice. Summer 1991, and the Holton's doctors in Dublin have now made it clear that they are unable to give a definite verdict on whether Katie and Eilish can be separated. So they've written to three hospitals around the world which have pioneered operations in this field. Toronto, Philadelphia and Great Ormond Street in London. The answers are eagerly awaited. Where's the duck? Is that the duck? What's the duck saying? It's hard to think of a more touching story than that of the Siamese twins Katie and Eilish Holton. Last year, ITV showed their parents facing the terrible decision of letting their beautiful daughters grow up together or apart. They decided on an operation to separate them, then Katie died. Now the family has invited us back to see how Eilish is coping on her own. You can pull it out a little bit if you want. Would you like to lie down while I'm doing it? No? You any news for me today? Oh, go away. What happened this morning? The girls go back to school today? Yeah. Do you miss them?
do this bit here. How are you looking up at? You're looking up at that nice picture. Are you? Who isn't that nice picture up there? Who is it? You in it? Are you? Are you in it? Come on. Is Kitty in it? Yes, she is. Do you see her? She's up there too. On a bad day, you, you have a lump in your throat mentioning Katie. On a good day, you can be as eyelish as and talk freely of her, and you can, you know, conjure up this lovely picture of Katie elsewhere. Um, if you're having a bad day, it's quite difficult to take that on board, but you do for the sake of eyelish and get on with it and tell her that, you know, Katie is well-minded and that Katie loves her and that Katie died because her heart was weak. And to emphasise to Eilish that her heart is not weak in case she would have fears. Look, I got everything. Oh, yeah. Does it look like I have everything? Oh, yeah. Right, off we go. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah
than she was when she was attached to Katie. But uh, she doesn't show any major psychological problems that I, I can see. Yeah. No, blue. Try blue. Oh, yeah, I feel she's matured, all right. Um, you know, maybe that has always been there and we didn't notice this as much with Katie being beside her, but um, certainly since she's come home, she's been okay. the life of this house. She's yeah, kept us all going. And, um, you know, in the last two months, she's been in great form. The blue at the back, is it? <coughs> blue and the back. Okay. Yeah. The next step for Eilish is a visit to the Roehampton Rehabilitation Centre in London, where she will eventually be fitted with an artificial limb. As you can see, this is the right side, the thigh bone, the hip joint, and the, that side of the pelvis. It is quite uh, fully formed on that side. And on the other side, the pelvis is uh, totally absent. absent right. And uh, in addition, you, as you can see, there is a curvature of the spine. Yes. Uh, yes. That is uh, as a result of the fact that when Eilish is seated, moving around, she hasn't got that part of the pelvis to distribute the weight. So she compensates with the movement of That's the spine. That's right, exactly. Right. So as a result, the spine is... Uh, is curved. Curved slightly. over that side. Right. And uh, this is something we ought to prevent in the future by providing a proper, uh, what we call a seating socket. Okay. Now, when Eilish sit down, she can bend that lever and, and bring, the, uh, yes. bring the leg to the sitting position. Okay. And when she stands up, the knee joint locks automatically. Right. So that it, it is meant to give stability when she puts ah, weight through it. Right. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it heavy, Doctor? Do you mind if I just feel not the weight? Not at all, not at all. It's just, Oh, yes, it's, it's quite light for all the components, components that it has. That's, that's oh, right, yes. Yeah. Do you want to feel it, Irish? Yeah. Do you want to feel it? Look. Yeah. What do you think of a leg like that? Mm. Back in Ireland, the future now looks more certain for Eilish. In a few months' time, she'll be walking with an artificial limb. Yeah! 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 we've gone through because I believe it had to be done, that we had to give them the chance that was given to us. We feel that Katie wanted us to take that chance. We, we felt that explaining it to Katie, uh, she wanted to be separated. She wanted to have the freedom that we see Eilish has today. And I mean, when we see the quality of Eilish's life, Today, I know Katie would have wanted that too. Fisher eating all the bread. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Do you want more? Fish oh, you're eating some as well. Good girl. Yeah. Why not? It's nice bread, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Ye